Hello guys and welcome back to Bioinformatics Tutorials and this is all about Bioinformatics Practicals and we are talking about to deal with the specific protein sequence of your interest and in this video we will be learning how to know uh, a particular sequence uh, of protein and which section of that sequence is hydrophobic which section is hy not hydrophobic and which is actually uh, whether the protein is having any transmembrane domain or not or any transmembrane region or not and this is really really important guys because there are majorly two types of proteins one is barrel shaped that those are transmembrane most of the time another type are uh, generally globular which are soluble right so these are the differences so if you understand that concept if you get the idea about your protein whether it is having transmembrane domain or it's kind of globular type of proteins you can get a fairly good understanding of what kind of protein you are dealing with right so that's why it is very very important to have a clear understanding of whether your protein is having any transmembrane domain or not now, now the software that we use in this case is uh, two different methods we'll be following in this video one is a, o a old age method that is uh, kind of ancient it's called the sliding window approach to find out uh, the hydrophobic region and we'll be also learning the theory of sliding window a little bit here and another uh, most important and the recent state of the art technology mathematical uh, mathematical algorithms are fitted a new version of uh, finding the transmembrane domain we'll be seeing that all uh, that one too so two different sites we'll be talking about one here will be talking about prot scale or protein scaling so prot scale is one thing this is also a part of xpacy server so we'll be talking about that we'll also t talk about uh, this particular site tmhmm and this is another server that will give us in important so just 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 look at the tmsmm it is from cbs uh, so so these are the two sites that will be following prot scale is ancient one using sliding window approaches till now uh, found to be effective but TMHMM I love this because uh, this is very very brilliant because uh, the, the reasoning that they provide is brilliant and the logic they provide is absolutely brilliant right so we'll be learning those two things here but but first let's talk about uh, a little bit about this prot scale and and how actually uh, this process of determination occurs right so let me select a color here and take a brush and now let's talk about how sliding window is actually come into play here now sliding window that I'm telling you now normally two types of proteins proteins are of two types are possible one is remember I've told you one is a membrane membrane protein membrane spanning protein actually and another one is another one type is globular sorry, globular type sorry, globular type proteins okay now normally what happens for membrane spanning proteins if we if I draw the situation membrane is hydrophobic in nature because inside the core of the membrane is hydrophobic right and the protein that need to stay inside the protein that needs to build inside obviously if it's a channel protein like that the surrounding regions for example these regions are surrounding region, this region should be hydrophobic in nature the center part should be hydrophilic so this is hydrophilic but these parts these parts are hydrophobic in nature it should be hydrophobic in nature to interact with the hydrophobic region of uh, the lipid molecule that is embedded inside the membrane right so in all these cases of transmembrane proteins or membrane spanning or transmembrane whatever same things uh, transmembrane proteins these things should have a high percentage of high percentage of hydrophobic hydrophobic amino acid sequences then the globular protein because if you consider globular proteins are something like this they're circular and for the globular proteins the total outside total outside section here is hydrophilic and only the inner sections are hydrophobic right so there is a difference but mostly so they are having a slightly moderate and less percentage of hydrophobic sections here but for transmembrane proteins they are having more percentage of hydrophobic amino acid so this is very basic now once you clear this idea now the second idea and actual idea about the sliding window so how can we predict 
suppose we are we are getting the protein structure you know the structure you get it from nmr spectroscopy everything is fine now once you know the structure of proteins let's say amino acid uh, x y z or let's say a b c d i'm just writing it i'm just writing it's not any name of amino acid you're writing a b c d uh, d e f g h i j let's say this is a uh, k l m like that and among them let's say this is hydrophobic this is hydrophobic this 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 hydrophobic so let's say if this is the situation normally sliding window means we start our uh, discussion from a single point let's say point is this a and we slide a particular number of windows so the number of amino acid in a window it determines it can be six it can be seven normally it's six to seven is a good good idea people can also take it like 17 19 like that but let's say let's say six let's say six here let's say six here and if we begin with here we can find and and it's it's an approach that once in this six or window what we get four out of six if we get four out of six as hydrophobic then we can call it uh, that section is a membrane spanning section like less like this way uh, actually I'm not sure about that normally it's taken from 17 to 19 amino acid sequence and mostly out of it is if the, if mostly out of it is hydrophobic uh, it's it's uh, it's convention that yes that particular section should be membrane spanning right and obviously not only that but also the region that we're trying to determine here should be made up with alpha helix more than beta sheet because remember this particular type of structure this this transmembrane proteins are mostly made up with alpha helices less beta sheet okay because mostly this spanning for the spanning purpose alpha helix found to play a very very vital role so they are mostly consisting of alpha helices so that's another important uh, thing to notice now if your protein is mostly made up with beta sheets that probably it's, it's not a part of trans uh, transmembrane protein you should know that uh, promptly right so in this case suppose you get this idea that yes it is uh, it is having more alpha helices so it can be uh, transmembrane so you can look at it and once you're looking at it what we can get from here you can get sliding uh, four or six windows apart so one two three four five so you can see one two three four five six so six windows apart number of amino acids two only hydrophobic so it's not at all the case now slide a little bit here slide from B now slide slide one again two out of it so it's not a good idea slide again so again one two three four out of it so four out of six are uh, good to go here now again slide another so here we go here in this case also one two three four five so five out of six now if we come here again five out of six so from this stretch as you can see from this particular onward to this particular section mostly are made up with hydrophobic sections so this is going to tell you that yes this section can be can be a part of cell membrane or membrane spanning section so this is how sliding window works you begin with one point and each time you conclude you slide one one amino acid apart you slide each one amino acid apart and you're sliding to right hand side from left hand side of your sequence that's how the process is done now if you put a sequence let's say sequence of 900 amino acids it is very much difficult for a human being to manually conclude this so to, for that reason there is the site that I have talked before this is the site remember pro, plot scale of XPC you can go to this plot scale click on the plot scale and we'll just go here and again uh, XPC is my favorite site because everything just very very similar very quick the result is provided but remind you this result takes some time because some mathematical uh, formulas are implicated some, some some results to be formed so we need to put the sequence here and you can put it in a raw format you can paste the sequence uh, uh, sequence ID the protein ID that you can get uh, from Swiss port you can just put it to protein ID there and here in this case you can see the amino acid scale is kind of provided because remember that I've told you this this scale this window for the scaling is very very important and this scaling varies from time to time it varies from one one uh, kind of rule to another kind of rule so here 
uh, default oh, it's they select this kite and do little model and I am also encouraging you to stick to this kite and the little model if you don't know about rest of the scale because it's kind of standardized it's kind of good so you can stick to it and the window size is also uh, kind of fixed to 9 this default if you don't want anything if you don't know anything just do not fiddle around the values it's always a good idea to keep those defaults and keep it 9 you can just put it 9 or I can just put it more than that we can see what what happens if you put it more than that so now let's select 9 for the first and we can look for it and you can see the relative weight of window edges compared to the window centers don't need to know about all these things uh, the model is linear and while all this just just hit submit button here and and if you need to in have more information about those parameters you can click here that's always a good idea you can look for a new tab what are those things mean window size means what what the relative weight thing mean what what the variation model means you can learn about these things when, whenever you want whatever you want everything every information is provided guys simply hit the submit button and it will redirect you to the plot scale but it says the entry failed so let us sorry oh we haven't pasted the entry yet oh sorry so just paste the value it's a horrible mistake right you submit without placing the entry so now now let's hit submit here and it will take us to the page so it will take some time because I've, I've told you that it will take a little yes and here we go the user provided sequence in plot scale is provided and using the uh, hydrophobicity hydro plot actually because this model that they provide they're called hydropathogenic plot or hydrophobicity plot and this hydrophobicity plot is kind of some values that they provide if the values are negative they're going to be a hydrophilic if it's positive and more than zero more than one it is hydrophobic in nature so that thing is uh, will count so if you look at here this is a result this is the type of result that we usually get now here this is the score you can look from the zero because more than one and more than this positive value is going to tell you some important fact so if you look at here and the stretch of sequence you get from this particular section is going to be your result so if you just place a scale or place a paper over that and if what we can see we can see some important facts let's let's place here let's just take this one as a scale here and if you place it here you can see some sharp peaks out of this place some sharp peaks we can see now these peaks are telling us that so just just take it slightly up you can look for up always and this is the thing hydri hydrophobic highly hydrophobic sections this is the section so you can see among all this region what is going to be the highly hydrophobic in nature and the answer is this section this is highly hydrophobic in nature so there is a possibility that this particular section is kind of membrane spanning and we can tell because the hydrophobic index is telling us it is very very high guys it's more than three more than three and it's kind of this peak is very very sharp but you can see very very larger distance so a number of amino acids are placed here to get this particular peak so you can uh, not talk about this anymore because this is what we got this is what we got and this is I'm, I'm telling you guys is going to be the transmembrane region according to our sliding window approach right so you can click it you can click this and it will give you to the picture you can save the picture as save image as uh, in your computer anyway in your computer so what we can see here actually uh, right after this 250 to at the last range last some amino acid sequences kind of 260 to 290 like that that particular section is hydrophobic highly highly hydrophobic so that section can be a section of transmembrane region you can save it in GIF format here right so that's a good idea to save always uh, as a GIF or uh, any kind of picture format because that's good okay so window is taken as 9 now let's go back and slightly fiddle around with this window value let's let's make it 19 it's pretty higher window and now let's see whether we get those peaks or not now if we don't get those peaks then probably that's that's not going to but, but again see again once we put it 19 most of the peaks are gone but still you can see the peak at the last end it still remains that means yes it is 
this is the section of transmembrane region right but again you should not believe on one particular data that you get from uh, from a website you should vary on many different websites if you are having those uh, uh, those resources check your results then uh, go to design your experiment so let's go to another site uh, that I've told you before that is TMHMM that is also giving you the information about transmembrane domain or transmembrane region in your protein so this is the TMHMM just type TMHMM in Google and you get TMHMM server from CBS click on it it will redirect you to the page now this site guys this TMHMM is much more advanced state-of-the-art technology is used many different variations of algorithms are used and kind of new so it's, it's obviously better the graphical representation is always better so you can check it but first you can check for plot scale because it's an earlier type uh, it's always good but let's tally these two results what we get from here simply paste the sequence you can paste it in faster format or simply uh, paste the sequence in raw format whatever it, uh, it never gets you a problem but say it's it to put it in faster format and you can see output format you can select extensive but no graphics you can select extensive with graphics always graphical results are always representation re representation are uh, good so select that and you can select old model because this is a version a newer version of of this it's, it's kind of see or higher version 2 of the server you can use old version because suppose you are uh, experimenting with a task with the old version now you need to return back to the experiment again uh, so the data shouldn't vary that's why you can stick to the old version but I am not doing it I always like new things so click it and hit the submit button it will redirect you to the page right it will take uh, so yeah it will take a very little time and give you the result in the res result you can see the length is provided 291 and the number of predicted transmembrane domains so you can see better better results always better the number of transmembrane domain only one it and the term here is predictor and do not do not uh, uh, so obey this particular thing that predicted thing because it's always predictions and you can see the experimental number of amino acids is 20 for this pred predictions as you can see 20 is the window that they take in that case and so transmembrane helix and the region of transmembrane helix is 269 amino acids to so 286 so the number of amino acids is also provided outside inside so that is a beautiful representation guys because remember three things are there inside that membrane outside the membrane and in, in between the membrane that is the transmembrane so you can see this blue one are inside the membrane this pink ones are outside the membrane and in between this red one are transmembrane so in this whole section most of the part are of inside the membrane here and, and a single part is transmembrane and slightly is out of the membrane so if I draw this protein structure here if I draw this structure here how it will look like in this case it will look something like this so if this is a membrane if this is a membrane most of the part is inside so this is the protein inside a small part is embedded and this because that is it this is inside guys this is inside designated as blue blue in this case in between designated as red and outside outside is designated as this right so that's what the result we get so you can see not only you get a uh, perfect explanation perfect data but you can kind of imagine how this protein is going to be so this protein is kind of attachment protein just like that you can see it's kind of membrane anchored protein instead of a channel it should not be a channel protein because channel protein will have more than one transmembrane helix there right so this is very very good representation guys so this is going to tell you some important properties right so this is it it's always good and the last part now if we tally this result with the plot scale plot scale is also telling us that this is the last section which is giving us the result but many drawbacks are there it is not telling us what is the exact length of amino acid that is trans -helic, uh, helix membrane and what are the other things we need to calculate this on our own so those are some problems regarding plot scale but this is good this TMHMM is really really good this is the version 2 and version 2 is the best so so again 
once you get the results coming same from different resources you can stick to it you can uh, go further with that results so that's it guys and i hope that's helpful thank you